tell us a little more about the unit, exactly what we have here. So we have 12 sensors. We have 12 sensors. So these sensors are going to measure in 6 degrees of freedom? 6 degrees of freedom. Basically. So what exactly does that mean? 6 degrees of freedom, there's three types of rotation. There's rotation in what's called the sagittal plane, which is forward bend, backward bend. Rotation in the frontal plane, which is side bend. Rotation then as, as in the transverse plane, which is just what most people consider rotation. Between this system and some of the three degrees of freedom system. So KVS was three degrees only. It says three degrees of freedom, which measures those rotations that I just showed you. What this system will also do, though, is measure up and down, forward and back, and side to side. And then we can watch the swing from any vantage point. Yeah. Top of handle, yeah. Okay, hosel one. Hosel two. Nope. Bottom groove heel. Nope. Bottom groove toe. Nope. Top groove toe. Nope. Mid hands one. Nope. Mid hands two. Nope. Head align. Nope. Just hit next. Upper body, left AC, what does that mean? Left AC is up in the shoulder joint. Okay. So you like feeling for his bone there when you're doing that? Yeah, I'm actually palpating his uh, shoulder to find that particular joint. And I'm going to mark that exactly where it is. Go ahead. Right AC. Right high, upper body. Right low, right GT, pelvis, what is that? It's a braided trochanter, it says the bony prominence in the, in the femur, the upper, the, the, the Does everybody have one of those? Everybody. <laughs> 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 pelvis left GT, so that's marking your pelvis, right? For so pelvis that, band, that, pelvis that, movement. So we'll know how much it's moving in all directions. Yep. Go. Above left GT. Go. Right upper arm outside elbow. Inside elbow. Go. Top of wrist. Bottom of wrist, right hand top knuckle, bottom knuckle, outside elbow, inside elbow, top of wrist, bottom of wrist, Top knuckle, no. bottom knuckle, no. outside knee, how many, how many points are there? right, right shin, outside knee. right shin outside knee. This is pretty serious. So this is not really something a golf pro can do, can it? Uh, you need to be familiar with these different points on the body. So. Inside, inside knee? knee yeah. Good? Yep. Outside ankle? Inside ankle? No. Middle heel? No. Middle toe? Outside foot, no. left outside knee, no. inside knee, no. outside ankle.
inside ankle, middle heel, middle toe, outside foot, model complete. Ah, he looks like a golfer now. His head's dancing around like Looks just like him. Like it, it kind of takes like his actual like stature. It does. It takes. It takes his. Yeah. If, if you have a tall, skinny. Yeah, you could tell. Yeah. Tall, skinny, uh, so he became a humanoid. He looks jacked up on this thing. I wouldn't give that much credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a non-hat on procedure. Yeah. That's, it's like, sure that I don't know if you can see yourself there, Mark. There you are. It's oh, yeah. crazy, huh? A bunch of time, yeah, yeah. 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 That's the coupling point, right. yeah. It's where the hands join each other. That's the that's the part that only takes a measurable pattern. The others are like right. hard right. to. That's the key point. So that's, that's, I, I got that from all, all these things I noticed. That's what they were all measuring. So I figured it must have been pretty important. Yeah, okay. Take a look if you'd like. So we digitized them and he's become like a uh, humanoid and we'll be able to... Now he's not in the sc full screen, does that matter? So we have to move him closer to the thing? Does it feel strange in that thing, Mark? No, no, so far it feels good. All right, so we don't see the club head. That's just the screen. All right, now it looks like he has a wood in his hands, but he has an iron. Does that matter? You can set it up so that it's just uh, set up the model. It's going to be the TPI robot iron. Now he's got an iron. So, Dave, now you try to get rid of the feelings of the poles? Yes, now. This will tell us everything he does, every part of his body. So when he's hitting well, you know, he could capture what he's doing. And if his days he doesn't feel right, he could see what the difference is. Bizarre? So Dave, you're not really capturing right now, you're just trying to get him comfortable. I just want to make sure he's comfortable swinging the club so that we can capture. We get a good sampling. He doesn't have any apprehension or anything like that, yeah. Only we want to make it as, as real as possible for him. You noticing a hard time hitting down there? Okay. Do you feel an added weight to the club? That look like a nice one. So I, I guess when I guess when they're designing this thing, they have to take that into consideration. They're trying to make the golfer as you know as comfortable as possible. You have to try not to sacrifice accuracy in the, in the measurement. Like I know this, a lot of the camera based systems just aren't as accurate as all the... Yeah, yeah like the mat you were probably indoors. Yeah. yeah. That was a good shot. Yeah. Yeah. 
probably the wind's blowing. So. <laughs> That a boy. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to get as much separation as my low half and the upper half. So I'm, my good swings, I actually can see my knee. Okay. And my bad swings, I can't see my knee because my knee's turned in. So you're trying to separate your upper body from the low body on the back swing? As wide as I can in my back swing shoulder, but I want to see that left knee. I want to see that left knee stay more still. I don't want to see the left knee move in much because I know it gets me all kinds of spine. Too. Almost like a stable left knee. Right. What you're working the, the, the more quiet my left knee stays, yeah. the, the further I hit it, the better. I like that quiet left knee. Have you have you had that thought with any of these swings yet today? I've been one for about okay. six months. Okay. okay. So okay. Right. I put rubber good. bands around my legs. I sweep the swing fan. I try not to feel anything. I like that. Yeah. And then, but but it would be interesting to maybe try to hit a draw just to see what a draw looks like. So this is going to be a draw attempt. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Cool. So that was an attempt at a draw. So what would you? What did you try to do different to attempt to draw it in your mind? Did you do that a lot when you're playing? Uh, try to draw. Yeah. No. No. Well, we talked about that, but I'm just putting on it. I mean, but I want to be able to hit the draw if I have to. Gotcha. How about through your career or looking back? Did you ever play a draw back? In oh, you did? Okay. But because I played a draw because I was stuck. Gotcha. And I just saved it, and that's the only thing I liked. Gotcha. All right, we're switching to driver. Now, there's no re-digitizing, is there? There's just... Oh, that's good. So we don't have to take any other sense. We have to take his head off. You have to take the head off? Well, that's, that's what we use to digitize the club. That sensor to the All right. So while we're there, how often do you practice, Mark? So like, you know, people wondering how a good player practices. How often do you practice? I'll hit balls every day. Hit balls every day. Yeah. How long? Uh, it depends on how I'm playing. You know, or it depends on where I feel like I need to put the time. Gotcha. You know, if, I'm, if my full swing's a little bit off, I'll, you know, I'll spend half hour, 45 minutes. But if I feel like I'm pretty good, it's just maintenance. Okay, so like, let's say you felt like you needed to work on something. You didn't play well. You'd go out by yourself, hit balls. Right. Yeah, usually I go to the end of the range. You video yourself, or you don't even I you don't. I haven't been videoing much because I've been more concerned with what the golf ball's been doing. Gotcha. Um, and I've been feeling pretty good this way. But if I'm totally lost, I'll pull the video out, and then I usually start tinkering on things I shouldn't be tinkering on. Gotcha. And it usually makes me worse. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. Okay. Good. Do you practice your short game every day? Yeah. I, yeah. Pretty much every day, and I put every day. You, know, you put every day. So how much total practice time would you put in on a day? <laughs> probably, probably a good two hours. Two hours? But you're still running the club, giving right. lessons, right. so is it... We went out, we played last night, we played a match, nine holes, so that was an hour and a half. Gotcha. We're doing just Do you find it challenging when the season gets tough, when the season gets busy at the course and there's more... Yeah, but you just have to allocate. Allocate time. So time management's a big deal? Do you practice more in the winter when you're... When you're, uh, when you're this winter I did practice more, yeah. And I, but I practice, I didn't hit more balls, but I practice more different things. Gotcha. So when you're practicing, do you play shots? Do you what? What do you? What do you? It depends on how you're playing, I guess. Yeah, it depends on you know if I'm if I'm playing good and everything's feeling good to me, uh, I'll just try to hit you know I'll start so with wedges and I'll try to get the same ball fight and the compression and, and the solidness of the hit is what I'm really trying to feel. Okay. But I don't hit a little bit fat. I don't hit a little bit thin. I want to feel a solid shot and I want to see the ball flight. And gotcha. Work under, I get that where you know the pitching wedges where I want it. Then I'll go to maybe one day I'll do evens and one day I'll do odds. And um, how about like the day before a tournament? Like you have a tournament where obviously you wouldn't get strapped up on three days. But oh, we'll, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah. I never, I never get too concerned with day the before video or anything like that. But I will hit balls. It won't be as long of a session, but I might putt longer and I might chip longer. And when you get to the course to play a tournament, you go to the range, I guess, and just warm up. Is it, you, yeah. For, I mean, the first thing I'll do is I'll hit balls on the range. I mean, balls on the putting green before you even go to the range. So you go to go putting green first. Gotcha. If you're teeing off, let's say nine o'clock in the morning, what time would you get to the course for a tournament? I get, I'll, I'll be out of my car in the parking lot at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Yeah, I make sure I have at least an hour. An hour. Yeah. That tee height okay?
So you felt something different there? Okay. Does that happen often? Uh, not if I'm playing well. Not if you're playing well. <laughs> so right there, Dave, we'll be able to see if there was anything different between that and his left hand club, the toe of the club. We'll be able to see. I'm curious if the body tilted more. So we would see side bent things like that. So how'd you label that one? I, I labeled it uh, fade, uh, face stain open. Gotcha. Yeah, we got this on film, so we'll know. Yep. Right here. Yep. Okay. A save? Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, I was going right, and I just saved with the very end. That's not the swing I'd normally like. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I saved with the very end. Am I teeing it okay? Yeah. Too low? That's good. We'll be able to see it from the bottom and up and all that. Yeah, be interesting. What do you feel different when you try when you when you try to correct something like that? Well, I, I feel like I've got more of this move than the good one, and then when I come through, my arms go more this way. With the bad one, and I don't know if this would be a good. Is it started by my body? Is it started by my arms? I'm not so, so you would be able to look at the kinematic sequence there and see the difference, Dave. Yep. Absolutely. It's probably something real slight, I would imagine. Yeah. When it goes good, it feels like I'm definitely under. Gotcha. Exiting left. When I get here, I get a little bit too deep into it, and then I feel like it's going to go way off to the right. And, and I don't know, it could just be my body positioned like this, where from here you can't do anything. We're going to find out. Yeah. I'm just going to see the uh, sway graph with that. Hmm? If, you're, if you're getting that ahead of it. Do you want to hit one of those draw shots and we'll see what happens? Yeah, yeah. yeah because see, when, I, when I'm playing well, I feel like this goes more over and you know around. When I get playing bad, I feel I remember when we were on the flight scope a couple weeks ago, when he liked it the best, it was definitely more a little bit of a leftward swing. Okay. Here's the draw. Yeah, that the, the, uh, thing you were describing. Ready? Yeah. Go. It's drawn. Nice to be able to just call a shot and then hit it. So now, you describe what you try to do in a regular swing, so what did you try to do different there to draw it? Just by closing my body more, okay. it makes the club go more inside. All right. And then I don't try to change anything different in my backswing at all. I try to do the same exact thing, but as I'm coming down, I get the knuckle, I get the logo to go down to the ground quicker. Gotcha. And then once I'm here, I feel more rotation through. Do you feel the exit different of the club? I feel way more to the right. Way more to the right, okay. Way more to the right. All right. So that'll be a nice thing to take a look at. So how many shots have been captured so far? Uh, we've got about, about a dozen, 10, 10 to 12 shots. So what do you say now? Uh, uh, as long as we've gotten everything that you, you want. You wanted to try a putt, you said? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. let me get a putter. Mark, I see that. 
What they do different? I, I, optically, I don't like much on the face. So the, the normal one had the two circles there. Uh -huh. So if I could just get one straight line and make. So they did that for you. They made it for. You? Yeah. See, it was, it was a proto. I see that. Yeah, mm. But I like I like face balance. Gotcha. You know, and I like something that's just real simple. Do you know what the loft is on that? Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be four degrees. Four degrees. I measured it. Gotcha. Yeah, actually looking down, this it might not be. And you have that leather grip on there too, huh? Yeah, like to keep it you consistent. like those. I like that. So when you practice putting, chalk line. Chalk line? I'm on a chalk line for at least a half hour every day. And how long of a putt? Uh, three feet, four feet, five feet, six feet. And what are you trying to do when you're on the chalk line? Just trying to. I'm trying to make sure that this line, if, if this. The line that's on the putter head. Yeah. If, if this was if this was the chalk line. Yeah. I'm trying to make sure that that black line is exactly on that line, and I'm trying to. The whole stroke. Uh, I'm more concerned about address. Address, gotcha. And my toes are parallel to that line, and my shoulders are parallel to that line. Ideally, I want the tops of my forearms to also be on that line. I tend to get too much this way. It's gotcha. Bad. So I'm constantly getting this down to make sure it's... So you're trying to square everything up at address. Right, and then I just try to put my elbows back. All right, so the, so the putter head obviously goes a little inside the line. It does go inside. I don't just try to slightly. Go inside. Yeah, it's just a natural arc. I don't even think it goes inside, but everybody tells me it does. Yeah, it's just the I said, I'm natural arc. Back straight through putter, and they right. go, no, you're not. Well, it's impossible to be because it's set away so from, yeah, an you're on an angle, yeah, right. yeah. How many putts in a, in a good round, tournament round that you play, how many putts are usually... Yeah, good round, I'll have between 20 and 32. Wow. Gotcha. But the other thing too that's a little bit deceiving is that, you know, that whole thing, now they change that element too, or how they measure putts. Right. Which I think is really good. What do they call that again? The uh, makeable putts? Yeah. There's a whole system of how you do it because you know you can actually hit the ball terrible, chip it great, and have a low right. round number of putts. You know? right. And I tend to hit a high number of greens and a high number of fairways. So your putts. So right. I have my putts can be. So how many how many greens usually hit in a typical round? I'll hit I usually hit 14, 15 greens, and I, so I'll go rounds where I won't miss a fairway. Oh wow. So I'll go I'll hit I'll hit driver and fairway 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 you know so. Ball is the hot topic. What's your thoughts on the belly putter? I was trying it last week just to see, and what happens with me... You never tried it before that? I never tried it before that. You know, with, with Keegan, the whole thing, you know, you watch how he putted. And, I mean, obviously, he's putting great. He's putting so consistent, too. I watched him at the Honda. I watched him at uh, the PJ National there. And, I mean, he's making par saves. He's making birdies. He's putting great. But with me, when that belly, when it goes in the belly and the putter goes through, this is a weird feeling for me because I'm always... I'm more the Stockton type. More of like a handle dragging? The, right, right, exactly. I try to... What happens is with me when I move my elbows gotcha. and I do this, right. the, there's not much breakdown in this at all. So what happens is the grip and the hands get way forward. So when I did the belly, I felt like I felt there was like no I, forward lean. It was like, I like I was a pure it. toss. Yeah, right. right. So you think it should be legal? It's a hot topic. I, I, me personally, I think they're beyond the point of return. They, they are the beyond the point yeah. of return. I think I mean, so too. You, so got, P, you, you got, got guys' P, careers. P, PJ champion winner. And now, if you if you say now they're legal, that taints his whole tournament win. Right. I think personally, but you know the whole thing about connecting to you. I mean, what's the difference if it connects to here? You know, you do something right. like this. So I think they're gonna have a hard time defining how it connects to you. You know, or even what happens if you hit a shot and you pull in and it hits you right here in the shot. You know. So how do you want to do a putt, Dave? Um, I'm gonna have to do it. Same like in the same same, same area. area. Putt towards the blue flag. Okay. You never tried putting before, Dave? Never, never tried putting before. Yeah, I see that. One second. All right, ready? Go. All right, so while he's breaking down, so tell us about your pre-shot routine. What have you developed in your experience that somebody at home might help their game with? Absolutely. I mean, I think that's in, in stressful situations when you have anxiety or you're not relaxed, it's huge. I mean, I had a time when, I would say maybe early 90s, where I got into that whole Sergio thing. I was exactly what Sergio was doing, and I couldn't stop it. Well, you are getting fidgety and stuff? Oh, yeah. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was ready to take it back, so I'd waggle again, and I wasn't quite comfortable, so I'd wag it again, and the next thing you know, I'd waggle 15 times, and I still wasn't ready. Oh, wow. So, and then I just rushed to get the shot over, and obviously you're going to hit a bad shot. So I struggled for a while, and you know, and I'm like, oh, I can't. I knew I, I knew I was having some problems, and I went to a pro, an old, old friend, and uh, he says, "How many how many times you want to waggle?" And I said, "I said, well, uh, waggle twice." 
So he says, fine. He goes, get up here, hit the shot. And I waggled the second one. I wasn't comfortable. I was going to waggle again. He goes, take it back, take it back. So I took it back off the second waggle. <laughs> and it felt terrible. And uh, so I, I hit another shot and I got into the second waggle. And I wasn't ready. I was going to waggle again. He yelled at me to take it back. And I took it back and I hit another shot. And I basically did that for a long period of time. And, and even though I wasn't ready on the second waggle, I took it back. And eventually, it felt very comfortable. And uh, the, the first waggle was almost ready. And then as soon as that second waggle, as soon as that clip hit the ground, boom, you're taking it back. And that had a huge thing for me. So what else do you do in your pre-shot um, routine? Visual, visualization as far as alignment and, and ball flight. You know, I'll, I'll, I always start from behind the golf ball. I always Even when you're practicing? Line. Yeah, I, with one out of five balls, I'll, I'll, hit, I'll do my full routine. Gotcha. You know, I don't like to just sit there rake over, rake over, unless I'm working on something more mechanical. But once I feel like I'm pretty good, I go through exactly what I'll do on the first tee of the tournament. Because then when I get on the tournament, I get on the first tee, it all feels it all feels comfortable to me. So you don't get nervous anymore on the first tee? You know, I feel like you want to, you know, you want to be a little nervous. You want to have the butterflies, just like Rotella said. You know, you want to have butterflies, but you want them flying in single file. You know? <laughs> <laughs> now, have you uh, spent a lot of time working on your mental approach? I read a lot of books on that. I don't, I... What's you know, your favorite read on that? Uh, you know, I, I like a lot of the Rotella stuff. I've read all his books, and, and, and for me, it's... It's kind of staying in the positive mindset, you know, and, and, and I see it with guys all the time. They get very down on themselves after they hit a bad shot. They get very negative. So for me, uh, even though if I've hit a bad shot, I try to stay as positive as I can on my next. So I can always recover from a bad shot if I'm thinking the right way. So the big question is, so let's say um, you're on the course. How do you do, like, swing thought-wise and things like that when you're on the course? Well, when I'm on the course and I'm playing in a tournament, I usually have one swing thought. You know, just one simple swing thought, and it might just be the way that I feel my body go through. You always play with the swing thought? You I always do. You always, I always do. do. Even okay. if I'm playing well, I, you know, I go through my same routine, I visualize, I see the shot, and then I basically just hit that same shot I've just seen in my mind. So the, the, the mind side of it is very important. Now, let's say you're going to make an adjustment to your swing, and something you decided to do. How much would you work on it before you played? Would you stop playing for a day or two and work on it, or would you try to incorporate it into golf right away? I would have incorporated it into golf right away. Right away. Right away right away like for me a big thing is my alignment I tend to aim to the right so when I'm when I'm practicing I'm playing I'm practicing with either sticks on the ground or clubs on the ground or something on the ground so when I get on the golf course I'll see that line pretty much going right where I want it to but if I'm not aware of it I'll start aiming more and more and more to the right do you have a, a like a caddy you use all the time the same caddy I try to use the same caddy every season I don't like to jump around you know so I mean that's the consistency for me that I like and it's kind of a partnership it's somebody you get to know when you're on the golf course you know you spend right. five hours he knows how far you're hitting all that uh, you know club wise and I think even in the situation where we saw the Masters with Phil at number four you know Bones I think he kind of he made it apparent that hey you know going back to the tee is an option you know I think sometimes when you get in that situation not thinking square, you know, straight, and it's nice if the caddy says, "Hey, listen, you know, you do have another option." And he, he, Phil chose not to do that, but you know, at least he knew that that was an option. I think sometimes you get in that rapid, "Let me just get out of here and let me get over with it," and you're not thinking clearly about your options. And the caddy can see it from a different perspective, right. you know. So what uh, what do you have in the bag? What kind of clubs do you play? Like hybrids, irons, lofts? Yeah, I go um, I go up to the four iron. I've always always struggled with a three iron. Always? Yeah, always. Even so back in the day? Back in the day, even when we had two irons and one irons, I was always that was terrible for me. Okay. So I was very. So you have four through, through pitching wedge tailor made. Tailor made, right? Okay, which which model is that? I have the MC. The, the gotcha. Cavity, the what cavity. shaft do you play? I've always used the um, the 1050 Nippon. Oh, okay. So I like a light. Feeling shafts. Does so 1050 like, mean it's uh, 105 grams? Five grams. Gotcha. The, the 950 I tried and I couldn't feel anything, so the 1050 was as soon as I as soon as I made a swing with it. Was, Are the heads upright, flat, standard? They're, uh, they're one degree upright, and my length my length is plus a half inch. Plus a half so inch. It, overall, it gives it two degrees upright. And what you have uh, tailor made wedges, I guess. Tailor made wedges, and they just sent me some new wedges, so I'm kind of in between on wedges. So is it that all terrain, that new all terrain ATV, thing? How is it? Yeah. ATV wedge is good. I mean, it's it's just it's different looking for me, and I'm a very field player, so it. it throws What's the bounce you have on your sand wedge? <laughs> I couldn't even tell because I grind it all off. I hate oh bounce. really? I hate bounce. Oh wow. So you I, grind it yourself? I, I grind it myself, and what I do is I hit balls on the cement, and I get it to where the mark is and right where I want it. Oh and really? I'm going to the grinder until I get it. Oh right. really? Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, because I, I'm very shallow through when I chip, so I like to be able to open the face up. Even on a bunker shot? On the bunker shot, I'm very steep, but that's I, I make a major adjustment because that's not my normal swing. I got gotcha. you. So with the bunkers, I have to make a concerted effort to get the club set, take it way to the outside, and then cut way across. Will you hit bunker shots every day? Yeah. You do? Yeah. 
And I've gotten to, once I learned that, that I couldn't use my normal swing in a bunker, I've gotten a lot better than bunker. But I struggled because I was so shallow. So what's the loft on your wedges? 58. Well, 58, and then my, my gap, which is anywhere between 50 and 52, whatever makes it go 110 yards. Oh, is that what you, you I use? I bend it until I make it go 110 oh, yards. Will you change it during the season? If No. I'll, like, most of my gap wedges won't go 110, so I strengthen them a tiny bit. Gotcha. And you have a hybrid three, I guess. Hybrid three. Nineteen degrees or twenty. Uh, uh, Nineteen degrees on that. I love that. I'm not even. I don't even think I'm switching to the new model on that. I'm just keeping what I have. And then my five wood is the old model. Is the old R11. I'm keeping that. I'm not going to the R11S because I just. I've had a lot of good success with it. And a driver. The driver. The, I switched to the R11S. And it's what degree? That's a uh, nine degree. Do you do any of those tweakings of the heads when you it can spin them around? Set, right. But you know, like the launch monitor, I'll set it to where I, I get the good numbers. You know. Gotcha. And I leave it, but I won't. I won't tweak it much unless I feel like I'm not playing well with it. And then the, the three wood is the Rocket Balls three wood. How do you like that? Uh, so far, I like that pretty good. Um, it's just it's a little bit of adjustment. Do you ever hit like fairway woods off the tee on par fours and uh, stuff, absolutely. positionally and all that? I mean, I, I try to play very conservative most of the time, but I hit my driver as straight as anything in my bag. How many shots in a round would you say you go all out on and try to bust it? Usually the four par fives. The four par fives. Yeah, that's about it. That's about it. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. It's good stuff to know. So what did you think of the uh, process? Yeah, that, was, that was good. I mean, I think, I think guys will be able to swing on that. I mean, it's, it's, like you said, you, see, you feel it in the very, very beginning. You know, it feels a little bit, but, but you get used to it. It definitely, the weight of it, I feel a lot more weight up into here where I normally don't. See, normally I feel the weight in the head coming down. Yeah. That's why I hit, I think, three or four real thin in the beginning.